Welcome to Intro to Functional Programming in Haskell. Today we're going to be talking about strings and other data types. As an aside, you should have already read Chapter 2 of the Haskell book, which just goes over basic syntax and semantics. You should have already installed the Haskell platform. You should be able to work in the Haskell REPL, GHCI. You should be able to write code in a file and run it, as well as declare a function and use it. We're going to talk more formally about types and something called type classes in the next video, but let's just go over some basic types and type classes in this video. First off, we'll talk about some basic numeric data types. Numeric data types are split into one of two categories, the first of which is integral numbers. Integral numbers include int and integer. Int is the more familiar bit-restricted data type that you've probably encountered in languages like C. It has a bounded range of values that it can hold. Integer is a higher level construct that can actually grow or shrink to arbitrary size. It can hold any number that you want it to. The other numeric data type category is that of fractional numbers. Fractional numbers includes the familiar float and double, as well as a type called rational, which stores numbers to arbitrary precision as a fraction. For example, this type would store one-third as one-third, and one-third multiplied as one, by one-half as one-sixth. There's also the scientific data type, which stores numbers in a scientific format, meaning there's an int integer coefficient and an int exponent that tracks decimals to arbitrary precision. Other basic data types in Haskell include the familiar char, as well as list. List is a type in Haskell. Furthermore, list is a type that is dependent on what it contains. A list of ints is different than a list of integers is, list, is different than a list of chars. However, the number of items in a list can change dynamically. It's just that all items contained in a list must be of the same type. Furthermore, string is just an alias for a list of chars in Haskell. Tuples are like lists in that they can contain an arbitrary amount of members. However, that arbitrary amount of members must remain constant. A tuple can hold three things, but it must always have three things in it. The number of members of a tuple is predetermined. This predetermined amount of members is called arity. Also, the members of a tuple can be of different types. So you can have a tuple that contains an int, then a string, than an integer, but the tuple may that same tuple may, may never contain three integers. Tuples are similar to lists in that the things that they contain actually can determine their true type. A tuple containing three strings is of a different type than a tuple containing three integers is of a different type of a, than a tuple that contains an int, a string, and a string. Another common type is I.O. This is a type that signifies that running a, running a function or program that involves it will have an effect, but more on that in a future video. It's now worth talking about some basic list operations in Haskell. Lists of the same type can be concatenated using the plus plus or concatenation operator, which simply just combines the two lists by putting the contents of the first one in front of the contents of the second one in a new list. The head function returns the first member of a list, tail returns the last member of a list, and the take function refer returns a sublist that is the first n members of a list as a list. The cons operator, which is the semicolon, builds up a list from the front. It's kind of like the push operation. Five, for example, five cons one, two, three results in a list of five, one, two, three. So type classes in Haskell are two types, as interfaces are two classes in Java. While this comparison is not 100% accurate to the root principles, it conveys some of the most important information. A type class guarantees certain properties or functionalities about a type. However, we don't really say that types implement a type class. A type has an instance of a type class. Furthermore, the Haskell compiler is able to infer information based on type classes 
that it knows a variable or expression has. But more on that in the next video. Some common type classes include that of num. Num is implemented by all numeric data types. Num describes the ability to negate, convert from the integer type into another type, and also get information about the sign of what is described by num. The bounded type class describes types that have a minimum and maximum. For example, int 8 has a certain minimum negative value and a maximum positive value because it is limited to a certain number of bits. The ORD type class describes types that can be ordered via comparison, so anything that has an instance of ORD must also implement greater than, less than, greater than, or equal to, and less than or equal to. The EQ type class describes types where equality can be known, so anything that has an instance of EQ must implement the is equal to and is not equal to operators.